Here in this question, we're given a sketch of a curve and we are told the equation of this curve is x squared plus ax plus b. So we don't know, it's a quadratic, but we don't know what the a and b are. Now we are told that two points, so 0 minus 5 and 5, 0 lie on this curve. And then we're given like a sketch of this quadratic and we want to find the turning points of the, the turning point of this curve. So the turning point is somewhere around here because it's where a, the graph changes direction. First of all, how do we find turning points of um, quadratics? Well, what we do is we complete the square and then if we can pretty quickly read off the answer. However, it's a bit of a problem trying to complete the square right now because we don't know what a and b are. So let's try and find a and b first. Now, how do we find that? Well, we know that these two points lie on the curve. So we can use that to our advantage because if we first of all look at this point, so 0 minus 5, well, that is saying when x is equal to 0 on our curve here, y is equal to minus 5. So if we swap x for 0 here, we're going to get 0 squared plus 0a plus b then at that point, y is equal to minus 5. So y is here, we just replace it with, not minus y, we replace it with minus 5. So we can just simplify this because these two things are both 0. So we have already found b, which is equal to minus 5. Now we do the same thing, but for this second point on the curve. So we know that 5, 0 lies on this curve. So what this is saying is when x is equal to 5, y is equal to 0. So we have 0 here and then that is equal to, well we just write out this equation but replace the x's with the number 5. So we have 5 squared plus 5a and then plus b but we've already found b to be minus 5 so we can just write minus 5. Now, if we simplify this a bit, we're going to get 20 plus 5a is equal to 0. So we can like send the 20 to the other side and we get minus 20 is equal to 5a. So we divide both sides by 5 and we get a is equal to minus 4. So now that we found what a and b are equal to, we can rewrite the equation of the curve. So we have y is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5. And now we want to find the coordinates of the turning point. So we're going to complete the square on this. Well, how are we going to do it? Well, if you remember completing the square, what we need to do is first of all, we have x in the bracket, then we divide the coefficient of the x by 2. So we have minus 4 as the coefficient, we half that. So we have x minus 2, and then this is all squared. So what we need to do now is we need to think, how can we go from this equation to this equation here? Well, if you notice, um, we can expand this out, which will give us x squared minus 4x plus 4. So what we have here is this, but what we want is that. Now, if you notice, the only difference is here we have a minus 5, but here we have a plus 4. So we need to make this plus 4 become a minus 5. So how can we do that? Well, we just need to take away 9 because 4 take away 9 is minus 5. So if we take away 9 from this, then we have the completed square form for this. Now, all we need to do is just find the coordinates of the turning point. So the way we do that is... Basically, um, a quadratic, the turning point will either be a minimum point or a maximum. Now, just looking at this graph, we can clearly see that in this case, it's going to be a minimum point because the turning point here is the minimum part of the graph. So what we want to do to this equation here is think about how we can minimize it. So how can we make the y as small as possible, which basically means make it as negative as possible. So the way we're going to do that is... Basically, if you look at this equation we have here, the only thing we can change is this part because x is the only thing we're changing. Now, if we want to make this y value as small as possible, well, 
what do we need to do to this thing in the brackets, this x minus 2 squared? Well, notice x minus 2 squared is always a positive number. So a positive number is always going to increase the y value. So if we want to make y as small as possible, so as negative as possible, what we need to do is just make what's in this bracket equal to zero because we want it to not increase the y value. So what we need for that is x to be equal to 2 because when you have x is equal to 2, you get 2 minus 2 here. So that here just becomes 0. So our x coordinate is going to be 2. And now how do we find the y coordinate? Well, we just sub x is equal to 2. So we already said it's going to make this thing equal to 0. And we have minus 9. So our y coordinate will be minus 9. So here's our answer. Quick announcement, if you'd like online tutoring from me, then just contact the number shown on the screen. Just send a message saying you'd like tutoring and I'll give you more information. Here in this question, we have a circle center O and it has circumference 20 pi. And then we're given a point Q, which is on the circle. And then we are told that OPQR is a square. And then we have the perimeter of the square to the per, uh, circ circumference of the circle is given by the ratio root A to pi. And we are told to find out what A is. Now, in this question, what I do first of all is when I see this 20 pi, what I think of is we're dealing with circles and circles are to do with radiuses. So let's try and find the radius of this circle. So how do we find the circumference of a circle? Well, it's given by the equation 2 pi r. And then we're told the circumference is just equal to 20 pi. So we can set those two things equal to each other. Now we can just find r because all we need to do is divide both sides. First, we can divide both sides by pi, cancelling them out. Then we can divide both sides by 2. So we just get r is equal to 10. Now the radius, notice what it is. The radius is saying if we go from the center of the circle to any point on the edge, that is equal to 10. Now in particular, if you notice the diagonal of this square, which is OQ right here is actually also the radius of the circle. So we have found what this is equal to, which is 10. Now this can help us with the question immensely because this next part, we look at the ratios we're given, which is perimeter of square to circumference of the circle. Now what we don't have currently is the perimeter of the square, but we can actually find it now because if we look at the square, what we need to find the perimeter is find out what this length is. Now, because it's a square, they're all the same. So I'll call them all x. Now, notice what we have as this shape right now. If we split up this square into a triangle, so like this triangle, which I'll draw a bit bigger here. Notice that it's actually going to be a right angle triangle because it's a square. These are all right angles. So we now have a right angle triangle with these lengths and we can just use Pythagoras theorem to find out what x is equal to. So um, if we use Pythagoras, then we know um, x squared, so a squared plus b squared, so these two lengths squared is equal to c squared. So that is 10 squared. So that is basically saying 2x squared is equal to 100. So we can divide both sides by 2. So we're going to get x squared is equal to 50. So now we can just find x, take the square root of both sides. So we would get plus or minus root 50, but because it's a length, it has to be positive. So it's just going to be root 50. Now, if I rub out, actually, no, we'll work over here now. Now notice this square root of 50 can be simplified a bit. Now notice this square root of 50 can be simplified a bit because if you have square root of 50, notice you can split it up as square root of 25 times by square root of 2. Now what is square root of 25? Well, that is actually just equal to 5. So we have this is equal to square root of 25 times 2, but this can be simplified to 5 times root 2. So we can rewrite root 50 as 5 root 2. So that is what x is equal to. So now that we have this, we can actually rub out 
these missing sides and label it with five root two. So I'm not gonna label all four sides, but now that we have this, we can find the perimeter of the square because all we do is we add up all the lengths. So we're basically multiplying the side length of the square by four. So five root two times four means the perimeter, which we'll write here, perimeter is equal to 20 root two. Now we know the perimeter of the square to the circumference to the circumference of the circle is given by root a to pi. So let's try and sort of write it as a ratio. So currently we have 20 root two is the perimeter of the square. So perimeter. And then the circumference, which I'll just write like this, is 20 pi. So notice we have this ratio 20 root 2 to 20 pi. We can simplify it because we can divide both sides by 20. So what do we get now? Well, we get root 2 to pi, which is exactly the form they're asking for. And a in this case is just equal to 2. So there we have our final answer.